Okay, welcome. Giving all praises and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah by Shem Rakak Wadash. Give it double honors to our elders apostle, Great Millstone. My name is Lamadia. And the inspiration from this video was drawn from a video I was watching from the elder brother Yasha Wamba on the Dallas, Texas camp. And the premise of his video is pretty much on order, brotherly love, and spies. So um, that's that's what the inspiration of this video was drawn for, drawn drawn from. And I wanted I wanted to talk about um, keeping structure and brotherly love because a lot of you guys get involved and join the camp and put GMS under your title, but you come in you come in with this democracy spirit. You feel things are supposed to go how you feel. Or you come in thinking you're going to make adjustments in the camp. That's not how things work. The Lord is about order. And the Lord set up structure. And you have to follow that structure. This is not a democracy. And a lot of you come into the um, into the truth, and you hold on to that former man, and you get around brothers who exercise that former man. So that's that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And um, what I want to do first is read First uh, Corinthians. Uh, 14 beginning at 39 it reads wherefore brethren covet to to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues now it says verse 40 let all things be done decently and in order so the Lord said let everything be done decently in order because when something is not in order what do you what does it create it creates confusion and the lord said he's not the author of confusion because whenever there's confusion there's satan that's why the lord is going to destroy america because it's filled with confusion there's no order there's no structure found found in america and the people are, are confused maniacs they bugged out. They got demons on them. That's why this place is known as Babylon the Great. But when you come into the faith, you're coming back to structure. You're coming back to how the Most High intended things to be. You can't come into the uh, camp with the Babylon spirit. Now let's go to um First Timothy three. I start at five. For if, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how should he take care of the church of the most high? Not a novice. Now what's a novice? A knowledge a novice is a person newly in the faith. And that's the guy that still need guidance and instruction because he's newly in the faith. But it says not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because, you know, the Lord always show examples of guys, you know, they get, they join the camp. They learn a couple of scriptures then they start getting ahead of themselves and they start thinking more of themselves than they are. And then Satan 
into their minds. And then they get puffed up. Because it's one thing knowing the scriptures. And it's another thing to apply them. I say it again. It's one thing to know the scriptures. And it's another thing to apply them. It's not regurgitation. It's application. You have to apply what the scriptures say to yourself. Because a lot of guys, you come in and you just want to be deep. And you put off the basic things or the basic scriptures, which are the fundamentals to the deep things. Now, let's go to um, Sirach 19 and 24. He that have small understanding and feared the most high is better than one that has much wisdom and transgressive the law of the most high because the law don't care how much you know because if you fear the most high you will do you do the things such as lo loving your brother being humble being in order okay because it's not just about just learning breakdowns now it's a point it's essential to learn the breakdowns but it's also important to learn the basics because what happened is a lot of times basic scriptures as love thy neighbor as thyself those scriptures which is very essential they get overlooked And those scriptures that's very essential doesn't get exercised and it leads to strife. It leaves an opportunity for Satan to enter the mind of men. Now, going to First Peter 4 and 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. And watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity cover the multitude of sins. Now, what is charity? Charity is, is um hoping a brother out when he's in need. Don't 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 always wait till a brother asks for help to assist that brother. If that brother don't got it, you ain't got it. You have it, he got it. That's that's the mind state, you know, you got to have. If you have a problem, we all got a problem. Until we resolve it together. We one body. Don't have it in your mind, well, I'm good, but, you know, I don't know about him. You got to figure it out. That's not the mind state, mind state you want to be in. That's that stuff you pick up in the world. And that's the stuff you're supposed to shed away. Cause a lot of you come in with this mind state of the of the the nigga shit in the world. Now let's say I give you an example. Let's say you go, you and the brother go to the the store, the deli, and you go to the back, you go to the fridge, you grab what you want to drink, you grab yourself a water, you order yourself a sandwich, but you realize that brother's just standing there. You know he's not he's not you know buying anything. Don't just assume he all right. Maybe he don't got it. Maybe he don't got it. So it's up to you to ask that brother. Hey, brother, you hungry? You need something? Get something. You know, don't just, you know, just be. You go to the store, you order it for yourself. And then now you, 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 bought, you, you order some food. You munching it down in his face. <laughs> Sauce is dripping down your bed. That brother's drooling. That's that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You know, you you supposed to, you know, share with that brother. You know, you try to make it work. And guess what? Let's say if you don't have the 
the funds. Let's say you don't have it. To like, like, oh, I'm about that brother son too. Well, that's where some discipline comes in. Because you ain't got to, like, you ain't got to eat food and, you know, a person's face. Because me coming up as a child, I remember my used to get company. My friends used to come over. And let's say my mother come home from work. She she buy, like, some, you know, junk food, whatever. And it was only enough for my siblings. My mother always used to tell me, don't go in the room with that food because it's rude, it's bad manners to eat in people's face. To stay over here and eat it until you're done, you go back. You know, so that's that's the mindset you're supposed to have. Let's say you don't have it. All right, pull to get you know, find a way to, to eat it to the side. Okay, and then you know that's another thing too. Sometimes you see a brother eat, you ain't got to be all in his face all the time. Let some, you know, like sometimes you got to just let that brother enjoy his meal. Don't be up in his face acting like you ain't eating four days. But sometimes you, some of you guys be acting like you was raised by a pack of wolves. You know, sometimes you got to know when to step back and let, a, you know, brother enjoy his, his meal. Being all, all up in his face. Just being greedy. And it all goes back to having boundaries because, you know, a lot of you guys don't have boundaries. But when you come into the faith, you learn boundaries with your brothers. And when you understand what's that brother boundaries, um, it minimizes you offending that brother. Okay, so I'm going to read that part again. 1 Peter 4 and 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity should cover the multitude of sins. Because when you give to the next brother, you help him out when he's in need. Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. They see that. And when you ain't need one day, the Lord's going to bless you. He didn't forget your works. Now it says, verse um, 9, using hospitality one to another without grudging. And don't, you know, that's another thing. Don't be grudging or be counting favors. You know, let's say you ask a brother to do something and he may not be in a position to help you out. You know, don't put up, don't make them feel bad for not hoping you out. And you start bringing up things you, <laughs> you know, that you did for him. Remember, we went here, I did this for you? Oh, I shouldn't have did that for you. That's grudging. Or a person that, you know, you hope somebody out and you resent for hoping that person out. Once you do it, that's it. You don't count any favors and you don't hold it against people. Because your attentions are supposed to be pure. And once you start grudging or resenting a person for hoping them, now your attentions are not, not pure no more. Um, this is Sirach 18 and 15. My son. Blemish not thy good deeds, neither use uncomfortable words when thou givest anything. So, if you give something or you help a brother out, you don't you don't say things to him that make that will make him feel like or feel uncomfortable to ask you again. You know, let's say a brother, let's say. I don't know, uh, whatever the case may be. And then you reply to him like, damn, son. Again? Oh, you, you, you know, like, all right, let's say, you know, you, you buy some food and you don't bust it down. Now you down to the chicken bones and you want to shit. Now you want to share after you fall you got fucking chicken bones full of saliva 
over the fresh chicken. <laughs> now you like, bro, do you want some? That's what you do to that. That's what you do to your dogs, not to another person or brother. Now it says, my son, blemish not thy good deeds, cause that's what happened. You blemish your good deeds now. You need to use <coughs> uncomfortable words without giving us anything. Like, yeah, you owe me now. I gave it to you now. You owe me. That's what niggas do. You know, your attention is supposed to be pure. Um, now this is a rock seven and 30, 34, so like you, that says, fail not to be with them that weep and mourn with them that mourn. That's the brother. You know, if you're if the brother's feeling down in the spirit, you raise them up in the spirit, you know, through the scriptures, go, go over the scriptures. You know, because that's what we are. We are brother's keeper. So if, if your brother's weeping, you weep with him. You build him back up where he's supposed to be. And mourn with them that mourn. And it says, be not slow to visit the sick. That uh, for that should be, so like it, for that should make thee to be beloved. <coughs> Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do a miss. So yeah, man, that's what that's what we're here for. We have to we have to be here for one another. So like it, give me one second. Okay, it's like it. Um, let me go to um, Sirach. Um, <coughs> um, I I read Sirach four and two. It says, make not an hungry soul sorrowful, um, neither provoke a man in his distress. Now, of a brother, let's say we're going through certain things. You don't want to be the one to add to his distress, you know. Like if, if a brother feeling down, you got to raise him up. You give him comfortable words. Don't you don't you don't kick a man down. You don't kick a man while he's down, as they say. Now, verse three, add not more trouble to a heart that is vexed and defer not to give to him that is in need. So there you go. It says you don't add more trouble to a, a mind that is already vexed. You know, if he needs something, you know, you help him out. And if he in need of something, you know, you give to him. Now, this is the um, Ephesians 4 and 20. And it says, "Be, ye, But ye have not so learned Yahweh Shah. It is so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shah. <coughs> That he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So you got to put up, put off the old man, because the scriptures give us everything we need to know in regards to judging matters, 
and our conduct, our conduct when we deal amongst each other. But when you, when you in when you was in the world, when you, when you was in darkness, there was no restrictions on how you dealt with with, with another person. But now you come into the faith, there is restrictions. There is boundaries. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true and holiness. Now it says, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are the members one of another. Um, it says, verse 26, be ye angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Because if you and another brother have a discrepancy, you have to be able to talk it out. And, and just squash that. And it should be water underneath the bridge. You're not supposed to have any resentment. Or doing doing petty petty things to um to make that brother understand how you felt. That's the spirit of a black woman. That's not that's not how we resolve um problems or discrepancies. That's not how we resolve them. You talk it out with a brother because half of the time, I guarantee you, it'd be a miscommunication or somebody overread in the matter but when y'all talk about it it get cleared up and that's it that's the end of that now it says verse uh, 27 neither get place to the devil but that's what happened if it doesn't get resolved and you let you let that fest in your mind it'll spread and it will grow. It's like a seed that's going to grow and grow. And that thought is going to get stronger and stronger. Before you know it, you're you going to be mad. And not even know why you're even mad at the person. But that, that means Satan already got a grip on you. That's why it's important and it's very essential to, you know, keep going back over these scriptures. Because we have to make us, we always got to make assessments. And do the things that is acceptable with the Lord by searching the scriptures. When we go through hell, meditate and pray to the Lord why these things are happening. What's the lesson behind these um these circumstances and why we catching hell? You gotta always remain spiritual. Um Okay, um, James 2 and 14. What do a prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Because love is not in word. Love is in action. You know, if you, if you, love, some, if you love somebody or you have love for somebody, you know, you know by action. And it says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, you know, the things that are necessities that a, that person may need. And it says, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Yeah, you, let's say, i uh, give you an example. Let's say you at uh, Brothers at Camp. And let's say that brother don't have it to get back home. And you have it to give it to him so you can get back home. You just don't walk off and like, well, you know, the most high going to help him. You just leave. Nah, it's in your responsibility to make sure that brother get home safe. 
you know if you could give him a couple of dollars to hop on the train or the bus or whatever give him a ride home you know that's you know you got to be your brother's keeper you know or sometimes you know we be at camp and it be hot as a mother effer and you see brothers <laughs> Uh, brothers sweating a shirt is quenched you know sometimes you know if you could you know go to the store and try to get a bottle of water for each brother you know if you could don't just get it for yourself now it says and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding he give them not those things which are needful to the body. What what do it profit? Even so, faith, if it have not worked, is dead being alone. Um, verse eighteen. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one power that do as well. The devils also believe and tremble. So it's all about showing your works. And I gave you, I gave a, a few examples on showing work, showing your work. Because love is not in word, it's in action. And I ended off with John 15. And this will be the close up of uh, John 15 and 12. This is my commandment that he love one another, even as I have loved you. Now, who's speaking? Yahweh Shah. Now, 13. Greater love have no man that it's like a greater love have no man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Because Yahweh Shah, he died for us. He died for Israel, because he loved Israel. And we got to have the same mind state towards our brother. Be able to lay down your life for your brother. Now it says, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made them known unto you. You know, so everything we learn is being re um, revealed to us by Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. That's when we read Revelation, the fifth chapter. Yahweh Shah had loosened up the seals and opened up the understanding unto us. And then another thing we had to be taught. We had elders. If we had apostles that taught us when we was in a darkest state and the spirit gave us faith to believe. So um, with that, I'm going to close and I'm just going to say um, there's always assessment that we can make and as we get closer, the Lord is going to manifest things that need improvement. Because the Lord, Lord um, require us to be perfect. So with that, I'm going to close, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, by Shem Yahusha, by Shem Rakaakwadash.